What's up, family? I want to have a real heart to heart with you guys. Man, the other day I was listening to um, something and it reminded me of Michael Jackson. And I don't care what you think about Michael Jackson. Um, for me, man, I've always had this fascination with this guy. And what I mean, I've had this great respect for who he was. And what I mean by that is to live his life from the time he was a little kid up under the lights and up under the scrutiny of the media and just everybody, you know what I mean? All the siblings he had, all the sibling rivalry, and just all the madness um, of who his father was, you know, um, just the the pressure of the entertainment world, you, you know what I mean? And just all of that. He had this song, um, Have You Seen My Childhood? Stay with me, we're going to go somewhere. Have You Seen My Childhood? And I love that song. Um, it's not my favorite song. Um, it's one of my favorite songs though, of Michael Jackson. And it's a trip because the great majority of us, we could sit back and we could look at how just all of that madness, all the stuff that he grew up in, how it played a role into him becoming the person he, he is or he was, you know what I mean? We understand the pressure. We understand the the glam, the the lights, and the, all that other stuff, you know. And we understand the fact that this kid's childhood was, man, he didn't have one. You know what I mean? He didn't have the normal American childhood. You, you know what I mean? He didn't have the man. Let's go outside and play, and let's go run around, and let's go play in the mud, and let's just do whatever you know play baseball football basketball hide and see you know whatever you know he didn't have that type of lifestyle he didn't have that type of childhood stay with me we're going to go somewhere and the majority of us were able to recognize that we're able to recognize that his life was impacted by his childhood by the things he endured, the things he seen, the things he witnessed. And we can look at other people and see that, man, you know what? Because of their environment, because of their parents, look at how their childhood turned out. Look at their life. And we can see how people grow up in certain circumstances. And it's like, man. I see why they are the way they are. We understand that. We recognize that. We see that. But for whatever reason, the great majority of us cannot see how our childhood has affected us. The great majority of us, we don't recognize because we look at everybody else's life and we see their life is totally different from our life. And we see our lives is different from theirs. It's, it's not the same. My childhood is this and this and that. We have all these different things of describing our childhood. But we never put it all together. For the great majority of us, we never understand. We'll grow up and get educated. We'll grow up and get religious. We'll grow up and go get all these other things. But we'll never put the two together in regards to our childhood and how our childhood affected us and the ways that it's affected us. Some of us have put bits and pieces of it together and we'll get stuck as a victim. We'll blame our dad, we'll blame our mom, you know, we'll blame our upbringing and that's it, you know what I mean? We'll blame everything else, everyone else, our aunts, our uncles, you know, siblings you know will blame everybody for why we are the way that we are we 
we have to grow up and understand that it doesn't matter what you go through. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And for some of you, you're not gonna like this. And you're not gonna like this because you're responsible. You're not gonna like this because you have to learn to take accountability and you don't want to. You never have and you never will. And it is what it is, you know what I mean? And some of you are not going to like the fact that you're responsible because, oh, you're just a kid and it's not your fault and we'll do what do because you've grown up your whole life blaming others and shifting the blame to everybody else and being a victim to that's all you know. And now that you're grown, man, you, you can keep blaming everybody else if you want to, but that's not helping you in your growth and development. That's not helping you in your spirituality. And it's a trip because a lot of us, we have an edge to us. And what I mean by that, because life was so difficult, because life was so hard for a lot of us, we grew up with this edge. We grew up with this, this attitude, you know, we grew up with this, like, man, I'm going to make you pay for it. Um, man, I'm mad and I got to prove myself. And so we use that, a lot of us, in sports. We use that in academics. We use that in our way of getting ahead career-wise, business-wise, relationships. And we don't understand what we're doing. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> All of those things. All of those things, they serve a good until they don't serve you any good. Stay with me. And what do I mean by that? When you're a kid, it's a self-defense mechanism. It preserves you. It keeps you. Unfortunately, the great majority of us, we stay in that mind frame. We stay in that self-defensive mechanism. We stay defensive. We stay guarded. We stay untrusting. We stay keeping our head in a swivel. We stay keeping waiting for the, the next shoe to drop. Everything that could go wrong, we expect it to go wrong. And we're prepared for it. What I mean by we have to learn to take responsibility and become accountable. When you're a kid, you don't know any better. And unfortunately, the great majority of us, we've grown up age-wise, but we still haven't grown up emotionally. We haven't grown up spiritually. And so we haven't learned better techniques or better coping mechanisms, better mechanisms of how to deal with whatever it is that we went through. And so we keep the same stuff going over and over and over. And it's all we know. It's second nature to us. That becomes our identity to us. We don't know how to handle anything else. We don't know how to process stuff other than the way that we've always done it. And so as a kid, man, again, it's a self-defense mechanism. It's a survival technique. It's a survival method, coping method, you, you know what I mean? But as adults, after we grow up, we have to sit back and say, man, I see where that's led me. I see how that's worked out. And that the truth be told, it hasn't worked out very well for me as an adult. You can't get mad and start pouting and just expect everybody to keep giving you what you want. You can't go off on a tangent just cussing everybody out and wanting to fight everybody and thinking you're going to keep getting what you want. You can't go blow up and then just go pout in your room and think everybody's going to come and kiss your ass and give you what you want. You can't 
start becoming manipulative and thinking that you could just manipulate people and pressure people into giving you what you want. Those are all childish behaviors. Those are all things that we did as kids coping. Now that we're an adult, supposedly, man, we have to grow up and start acting like one. You have to understand that all those things that you've done in the past, man, you got to let that go. You have to understand why you did it. You have to understand how those things served you as a little kid, but they really don't serve you now that you're an adult. And in fact, they're self-destructive. They're negative, they're toxic behaviors. But because that's all you know, and because that's got you what you wanted as a kid, you grow up thinking, man, that's what you keep doing. Now you see these grown adults, women, guys, with all these little temper tantrums, manipulation techniques, and all this other craziness, because they've never grown up. They've never grown up. They get mad and they blow up and go left and thinking everybody's supposed to kiss their ass. They haven't grown up. Family, once you get to the age of maturity and you're now responsible for your actions, you're responsible for how you think. You're responsible for how you process information. You're responsible for how you react and respond to information. It don't matter what's going on around you. You are responsible for that. You could blame your boss, you could blame your mom, your dad, your siblings, your husband, your girlfriend, we'll do, we'll do. We'll. And it's like so many times that, you know, I used to hear growing up a lot, you know, guys talking, guys not wanting to have these emotional conversations with women. And man, they blow up, you know? And then they want to flip the script and talk about, man, these women pissed me off. And if they didn't do this, whoop de whoop de whoop, then I wouldn't have did this. I wouldn't, have, you know, it's her fault because she pushed my buttons and she did this and da 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 da. And it's like, hold up, time out. Time out. You a grown ass man. You a grown ass man. And because this lady's asking you questions or whatever the case may be, and she's wanting to have these conversations and it's pissed you off because you don't know how to deal with your emotions and you don't know how to handle your emotions. And now you're triggered. And so you're just going to revert back to your childish ways of blowing up. And that's cool. Again, two weeks their own. Two weeks their own. Some of us. We think that, man, if I just act like it don't exist, then the problem goes away. It's a childish behavior also. Just because you avoid the situation, just because you avoid conflict, don't mean that the conflict goes away. It doesn't mean that the problem goes away. It just means that you're sweeping it up on the rug. And I guarantee you, like the volcano, is going to build and is going to build and build and build and the pressure is going to grow and grow and grow until the point where it erupts and it blows and that's what the great majority of us do that's what a lot of us do we just hold stuff in hold it hold it hold it hold it go drinking with the fellas go drinking with the girls we'll do we'll do all this stupid stuff right ignoring it just man just giving it a pass giving it a pass giving it a pass and then it you can't ignore it anymore because it's blew up and it's worse now than had it been if you just dealt with it initially we have to grow up you have to grow up. Why do you do what you do? 
why do you get mad and just start crying? Why do you get mad and just go into shutdown mode? Why do you run away? Why do you run away? Those are all childish coping mechanisms. My hope and prayer is that we stop and sit down and understand who we are. Understand who you are. Why did you get mad and just start screaming? Why did you become so violent? Why do you become so apologetic and start acting like everything's your fault? And start trying to fix everything. These are all childish coping mechanisms that we learned as kids. We learned these things as kids and we never outgrew them. May this year, may you become, may you have a greater understanding of who you are and why you are the way that you are. You could talk all the religion you want to. You could talk all the spirituality you want to. You could talk all the growth and development you want to. If you don't know who you are, if you don't understand who you are and why you do what you do, everything you talk about, everything you do has been in vain. You've completely missed the point. You've completely missed the point. And so many times, we, as adults, we'll see these same toxic behaviors in our kids. We pass these traits down to our kids, not even aware. And we think that we've, man, we've given them some great traits, you know. Oh, we've made them tough because look at how they are. And man, look at how they do. And, woo -dee -woo -woo. and we're so proud of the traits that we've passed down to our kids. Not even understanding that they're toxic. Not even understanding that they're self-destructive. Not even understanding that we're putting a shackle around our own kids. I love you guys. Happy healing. Peace.